you have to pay a premium to enjoy the white space that comes along with this penthouse unit. This entire project Something that's very interesting is that on this particular step, which is step number nice. one, why we drop off points, you have a gym. Three, so we're gonna head in. Let's go. Mission control. We have lift off. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of our new launch review series and today we are bringing you to another part of Singapore. I'm sure the previous um, launches have seen, you know, you're all in the Lantau area but today we're going to go to the East Coast area, we're going to do D15 and joining me in the studio today are two new faces, Alexa and George. Maybe Alexa, you want to just introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Alexa, listing manager with PLB team. Hello everybody, <laughs> my name is George and... This side is the best side. <laughs> 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 Alright, so today we have with us uh, Kun Seng House. Uh, I'm sure uh, you may have heard of this project, you may have not heard of this project. So this project is actually a small boutique development that's mm. located along Kun Seng Road. Mm. Uh, it is also part of an on block uh, but, um, and I will let Alexa bring us through in, in terms of the whole entire details of this place. Okay, sure. So I think first of all, I think an uh, interesting question to ask is, hey guys, what do you guys know about Kun Seng Road? It's um, definitely named after a man. <laughs> How do you know it's named after a man? Sounds like a masculine name. How about Wayne? Are you familiar with Kun Seng Road yourself? Not really though. Really? I mean, I, I know that it's definitely after a person. La. It must okay. be a famous person, right? Otherwise, you won't have it named after him. Correct, right? correct. So to be very honest, right? I think I'm going to get beaten up like this. But when I first heard of this, like Kun Seng House, I was like, what is this Kun Seng? And where did this name come from? Because I said it sounded like, you know, some mini mart don't say the <laughs> HDB. Okay, please don't beat me up. So I went to do some research, you know, went down the rabbit hole. So thanks to NLB, I actually found out that Kun Seng Road uh, was actually named after Chong Kun Seng. Mm. And it's actually one of the first cohort of 13 students at ACS. So I'm sure all the ACS alumni people, you must know about this person because I believe there's a Kun Seng house within the ACS schools. Yeah. So mm. overall, you can see over here, he's a very successful businessman, well-known public figure, and also he's memorialized as a Janiya friend, sound businessman, loyal mm. old boy. So a lot of good values are tied down to this name. Mm. Okay? Mm. How All about right. the neighbourhood? Okay, so the neighbourhood over here, I think if you go to Instagram, interestingly, right, this is known as Singapore's <coughs> prettiest neighbourhood. So if you go to Singapore, you see a lot of ladies in lovely flowy dresses taking beautiful shots in front of this entire stretch and posting about it. Mm. So, George, have you taken any photos here? Uh, for my wife, yes. And yourself? No. We will do it soon. <laughs> I don't think I'm deserving of this. Yeah, at a bad job. Okay. Okay, so what about Kun Seng House? So, alright, so let's... Ooh, let me just mute this. So, going down to Kun Seng House, mm. if you actually check the e-brochure, these are the mm. exact words that they use. Mm. So, it is going to be a collection, a place that is filled with warmth, comfort, familiarity, mm. intimate space that is welcoming, mm. yet part of a neighbourhood filled with charm, colour and character. And I think those of you who live in the east side near the Juchat area, you know that the neighbourhood there, people always go there because they're attracted to a certain vibe that it's it has. It's a lifestyle uh, over there. Yes, it's yep. a lifestyle over there. Yep. So I think the keywords over here for this development is hyper-connected, hyper-convenient, hyper-cool and mm. when a house becomes a home. So going on, a few things to take note. Uh, this is going to be a freehold development located at 89 Kun Seng Road, mm. only 17 units. Mm. So if you look over here, um, the size over here is about 13,000 square feet uh, plot of land. Okay, not located very in, big. La. Not very big, mm. but that's, I think, quite correct, characteristic yeah, of, of a lot of the developments there. Yeah. Uh, highest up to five stories with a roof terrace. Uh, and I think the good thing is that there are actually two lifts. So I think the lift to unit ratio of 17 units, pretty decent. Mm. 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 Right. So I think this is also an on-block project, right? Yes, correct. So previously, yes, oh, yeah, yeah, right. actually just, uh, you see this news, it was in 2022. So actually quite recent, I would say, two years mm. ago. It was actually sold to the Mackley Group for $19.9 million. Mm. So mm. it says over here at the bottom, the sale price then translates to a land rate of 1,063 PSF per plot ratio. Yeah, so if you look at the land lens, <coughs> courtesy of HProp, uh, we can see that this is basically their transacted pricing. Uh, and when they calculate that out, in terms of break-even price, it's about 1.9. Mm. So 1.9k PSF, that's basically a break-even price uh, PPR. Um, usually, if you factor in about 10%, 15%, depending on the developer's profit margin. Mm. Um, based on this 2095 pricing, I think they are basing on a 10% profit margin. Mm. Um, but based on what they were supposed to launch it at, I think they are launching it at about 2,000 to there about. So that's about, I would say, 15% kind of like profit sharing. Mm. Uh, I mean, profit margin. Correct. Mm. How about the developer? Okay, so just 
to share, I think this uh, Mackley group may not be very well known amongst, I guess, the general public. Mm. But they actually have quite a good track record of uh, building condominiums, mixed development. So one mm. of the things they are, so, okay, yeah. So over here, these are some of the projects that they have. And New mm. Novena and the uh, Iveria yeah. actually already sold out currently already. Right. Yeah, under construction. Mm. All right. So going to the next slide, uh, one of the things that they are very well known for is modern design. So I think over here, they have Noma. So Noma, you can see there's a very big like piece of street art along the side of the wall. If yeah. you actually go past the building now, I think, yeah, you can actually go see it. And even uh, like, I think the other projects like uh, Iveria mm. actually appeared on like Tetla, mm. which is, you know, aimed towards the high SES uh, social class. Right. So obviously coming back to our project, you would expect that they will bring similar touches to our project. So mm. over here, very nice. It's inspired by Ikigai, Japanese concept about how you need to live your life to the true purposes. You can see that the touches, the things that they use are more catered towards the high-end aesthetics. Mm. Mm. The colour palette is more towards a very early, early yeah, tone. Yeah, early, right? muted. Uh, Which looks timeless pretty much la, similar. Timeless. Yeah, something like this. So I think you have a very mm. timeless design in terms of the colour and stuff. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah, so in terms of location wise, I think this one we'll let George share with us like where exactly is Kunsing. Because House. he says each site is the best, the best site. <laughs> so we'll let him uh, prove to you that it is indeed sure. the east site. Let's go. So um I think if you take a look at the east, um district fifteen. So east usually is like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Mm. If you talk about uh, you know, you want to be closer towards like the Marine Parade, the East Coast area, then that would definitely be towards the District Fifteen. Um, oh, a few key reasons why people love the District 15 is uh, number one, the park. Mm. So, you know, you can just hit down across um, the underpass and then that will bring you towards East Coast Park. Mm. That will be towards the Marine Parade area. Mm. Um, as you move up slightly, that will bring you towards the Ju Chet area. And then after Ju Chet, or rather right in between Ju Chet, is where we will be at uh, Kun Sing. Mm. On the other side of Steel Road, that will bring us towards the Tulok Kurao mm. area. So this is largely the kind of breakdown uh, in terms of this District 15. Mm. So um, the vibe, if you know, you come over here, mm. why this is such a vibrant, vibrant vibe right now is that um, there has been a lot of transformation. Mm. Firstly, also partly because of the hotels that are up and about over at the area. Mm. So if you were to head on towards um, you know, the East Coast Road at night or uh, in the mm. evening, the vibe, I would say, is quite different. It really feels like you're not in Singapore. Like more relaxed. Yeah, it's atmosphere. very, very relaxed. Um, and then if you walk along the whole entire Juchet Road, um, there's a lot of eateries. Mm, um, right. The vibe is different. You will see people like just playing music along the roadside and stuff people like that. People actually being happy and relaxing. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty happy. Uh, there's lots and tons and tons of food options. Yes. So yeah. that's another one. Um, the most important, one of the most important key factors is also because of the school. Mm. So if you talk about District 15, um, there's plenty of schools over there. Uh, but of course, predominantly, a lot of people, they can stay there because they, there is uh, the preschool. There's tons of preschool over there. You have the Odyssey. Um, you have, what else? Odyssey is along, along Steel Road, right? Along Steel Road, yeah. yeah so Odyssey, that's on the other I think, side. is around, after Naturalist. Yeah, around, correct. Yeah. So down Steel Road. So you have, uh, yeah, so tons of it and then you have um, primary school so uh, you have Higgles just right beside it's and then right you have here. CHIJ Katong mm. Tanjong Katong Taunan so you have a mix of um, uh, what do you call it established yeah uh, schools well sought after or, schools you know just go school or a mixed <coughs> school so mm. um, for Kun Sing House within 1km we have 4 schools mm. CHIJ Katong Higgles Tanjong Katong and Taunan the why this intersection or this particular area is is uh, I would say very strategic mm. is because you are at an intersection of four schools. Mm. Now, once you cross over towards Ju Chit Lane, which is after Hit Girls School, yeah. uh, very yeah. good example is you just take a look at Legenda. Legenda. Once you are at that area, lo and behold. The number of schools that is within 1km will drop down to 2, which is just Higgles and Tanjong Katong Primary School. Mm. You will not have CHIJ, you will not have Taunan, Taunan School. Yeah. Right. So, I think if you talk about school factors, uh, you know, once you're at Kun Seng Road, mm. that is probably at the boundary. Once you cross towards the other side, you are short of mm. the 2 so primary school. So, you just school. made it within yeah. that boundary. You just made it. And yeah. what that means is, of course, if you take a look at uh, PLB Mode's analysis, mm the number of schools and all that will matter a lot. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so this will be the, the prime of the District 15 and of course you have parks and all that stuff. So I would say you are in the vibrant parts of the D15 itself. Mm. Yeah. 
Connectivity wise, I think it's also very convenient. La. I mean, of course, we all know about the whole entire D15 area. Mm. You have your um, Circle Line, you have your Thompson East Coast Line as well. They are mm. all up and running already. Um, mm. Amenities wise, that's what uh, George has mentioned earlier on. You know, yep. you're not short of food. If you want to go shopping centers, you also do have quite a couple mm. of malls right there. Mm. Uh, so I think, in a way, the whole entire area is very vibrant. So I think you will not be one, you will not be short of any form of like you know food options mm. uh, supermarket and stuff like that when you're staying right there right. but yep. just to take note of is that you know the whole entire area right here because you are in the whole Joo uh East Coast area um, it is still of a very low plot ratio so mm. all the pro projects right here they are all of 1.4 1. 1. plot ratio so in yep. a way that's the reason why for this particular project the highest floor you need is only five. level yeah, 5, five. Mm, correct so now let's take a look at the project itself um, going in into the site map. So of course, being a smaller scale development, um, I would say that you know, the facilities would then have to be in a way managed very efficiently. Mm. So you don't really get a very good luxury of space whereby you know, swimming pool can be on the street level. Mm. Yep. So in this case, the street, uh, swimming pool is actually on the second level. Oh, the pool is actually on the roof. Oh, the roof on the rooftop. Yeah, okay, on the right, rooftop. sorry. Rooftop, yeah. right. So then basically, I think most of the facilities will be on the on the roof rooftop. So area. your barbecue area, your play area, yeah. your pool, your pool mm. bag, the shower will be on the roof terrace. On the first floor, the main thing that you have is an air conditioned reading room. Mm. And, your and your parking. Right. Yes. Yeah. And your uh, parking. Right here. Yes, the parking. Yeah. So, so coming in will be via Kun Seng Road. Lah. Yeah, mm. coming in will be via Kun Seng Road. I think uh what the developer has done is that uh usually for smaller scale development, um having roof terrace uh facilities are not very common last time. Mm. Last time they were probably position at the site and then because they position at the site you lose out in terms of the facility zone mm. so of course they, I think they have done it brilliantly where they maximize the roof terrace space and then while you're staying in a small scale development of 17 units you're not short of facilities mm, correct. Yep. Yep. so it's just some renderings of what the image will look like la. so this is basically I believe this one uh, did they call it the infinity pool uh, yeah, I think so you can <laughs> call it the you can call it the yeah, infinity because pool. Because I've been la. seeing yeah. a lot of infinity meters, pool recently. Not bad in the length. Yeah, okay. not yeah. bad, not bad. Children's play area that is right beside the pool. You have your reading room that is on the level one, which is air conditioned. Mm. Important, important. Uh, which is quite I think quite good in the sense mm. that today, if you let's say you want to take a step out of your house, but yep, you, yep. you want to work, you can probably There's just come here and do some work. Mm. And upstairs as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. In terms of the units distribution wise, uh, we only do get two beds. Mm. Three beds and four beds, so you don't get um, those very interesting mix like two plus study, two mm. plus one, two bedroom, uh, mm. two bed one bath right. kind of configuration. So everything is two bed two bath, three bed two bath. But what we realize is that the size, um, in today's context, I think is still relatively big. Yeah. Because you yep. do get a two bed two bath at seven hundred plus square feet. Correct. Um, three bed two bath is at thousand three square feet. Um, and four bed two bath will be at two one thousand two square feet. Mm. Mm. All in all, I would say that um, unit mix is pretty much um decently spread around. You do get more four beders. Mm, surprisingly, yeah. right? <laughs> I think it's also because you, you are within one km to yes, the four. Yes, so tools. you know that the kind of profile that you want to attract are likely the family profiles who have school going children yep. over yep. here. But maintenance fee wise, I mean, this is just estimate. Maintenance fee wise, because of the smaller mm. scale development, mm. uh, then naturally you'll definitely be on a higher side. Mm. So do expect to be in the range of about four plus to five plus. Yeah, right. Yes. So now let's take a look at the chart itself. So how is the unit being? You know, arranged. So you do actually get one tree bader on the first floor. Yep. That's the B2 layout. Mm. Mm. The rest is all starting from the second floor unit. Correct. So all your red color stacks are all your two bedders. Mm. And then your three bedders are all the green colored ones, except for that one yep. unit B2, on the right. first floor. And the light blue, the darker blue, and the purple are all your four bedder units. Mm. So actually from here, you can't really tell. I think you have to look at the topical, like from a top view mm. to see how the layout is like. So, mm. yeah. So what? Oh, yeah. So one thing in interesting to note is that for the two bedder unit on the top floor, you do get a slightly higher ceiling in the living, dining, mm. bedroom area. La. For your mm. normal units, I think it's the standard about 2.8. Right. Yep. But for the fifth floor, uh, approximate estimate going to be about 3.6 meters. Likewise so for the four bedder as well, right? Uh, the four bedder for the other one, yeah, yes. The right. other one is rooftop. Later, you will see. Yeah, yeah correct. correct. But do take note that this um, increase in the size of the extra three mm. point. I mean, the extra about uh, 880 80 cm, mm. that will be factored into the strata space. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, this is actually the two bedder stack. So, uh, we have also plotted out in a way uh, according to the side map. So, your two bedders is actually in stack one that is facing towards the southwest direction. Yep. Mm. Right? 
And so it's quite interesting because yep. they actually gave like the bigger <coughs> units the other side. Like the two smaller, two beta, they faced it towards the west. But later when you see the actual layout of the two beta, mm. right, you notice that they won't actually get hit directly by right. the west sun. So for me, this means that the development was considerate when they were planning out the layout of mm, the mm. units itself. Mm. What about this, Alexa? Okay, so for the three beta units, uh, the green stack, all of them are your typical units. Mm. Ceiling height is 2.8. But you do have that one special unit on the first floor mm. uh, next to the car park area. Mm. This one, the ceiling height is going to be approximately 3.9 meters. Which is quite high. Which is quite high. Yeah. Mm. So the, size the, and the, the size of the floor plan also looks a bit different from the other units. Yeah. La, we will take a look at that yeah, later. We'll take a look at that so later. this is a four beta stack. Mm. So four beta as well is 3.6. Yes, right so four beders also, the typical units have the same height, but looking at that purple one on the top floor, you also have a higher ceiling height, about 3.6. Mm, mm. mm. So in terms of orientation-wise, uh, four beders will be naturally on this part of the building and also on this part of the yes. building. Mm. Mm. They'll be facing towards the church, uh, which is mm. just right beside right. Yeah, Carrie's Methodist, Methodist yeah. Church. Mm. Mm. Where's the church? Let's see, bringing out the street directory map. Here it is. Uh, so yeah, here, so yeah, so both the four beaters will be actually be facing towards this direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. All right. So now let's take a look at the actual floor plan itself for two beaters. I would say that the layout, interestingly, is um personally I quite like it Yeah, I quite like for it. the two beaters as well <laughs> I because quite like it. there's a lot of things that we have always been advocating, we have always been talking yes. about like enclosed kitchen and stuff like that. Uh, they are all present in this particular layout. Correct. Uh, and there's also some very unique things that the developer has done for this unit. I'll let Alexa share. Mm. On that. So just looking at this floor plan alone for two beders, right? I was mm. like, wow, this is really a luxury. Because I think your standard two beder units, uh, a lot of times, when you come in, you are faced with the kitchen net. But over here, you take a look, right? You're actually getting an enclosed kitchen. Mm. And also the thing is that it comes with a household shelter. Uh, a lot of two beders now don't really have the luxury of giving you a household shelter. Mm. Yeah. So over here, the balcony, an interesting thing is also that I think... Um, the minimal length for all the balcony, I believe, it was going to be about 2.6 meters. Mm. So this is actually the smaller balcony, I believe, because it's a two-bader unit. But it's function in, fun functional enough such that if you want to place your dining set over there, mm. you can. And if you look at the living and dining area as a whole, it's a very squarish, spacious, open kind of space, la, which is what I like. Mm. Yeah, you don't really see that now in typical two-bader layouts. Yeah. So maybe we can go to the next slide. The, this is the one. Yeah, yeah, the because kitchen. I thought this was really good. Uh, for all the units, right, you see that they actually thought about it and have a ventilation window in the kitchen, the enclosed kitchen, mm. that can open up to the balcony. Mm. Yeah, I think mm. that's great because nowadays, sometimes when you see the kitchen, if it's enclosed, there might not actually be ventilation windows. And for those of you who do cook heavily, you know it can get, the fumes la, can get mm. quite heavy. Yeah. Mm. Um... Yeah, so this is what I was talking about, also the balcony. La. Minimum length is 2.6. That will be for your two bedder. So for your bigger units, I think you get a slightly, slightly longer, longer right. balcony that you can have more uses for. Mm. Yeah. It's like George, I think he wants to say something. Come, George. Yeah, can we go back to the, the, to the floor plan? plan? Yeah. Mm. Um, I think if you take a look at the, at the living and dining, right? Mm. You'll notice that uh, your your sofa area is like just right beside the household shelter so mm. you can't really place much things if you want to really have access but that uh, definitely provides you with a uh, big enough space mm. we'll take a look at the price point later because for this 2 bed 2 bar mm. 7, 8, 6 square feet that is definitely on the larger side yes. compared to some of the Typical, new launches yeah. mm -hmm. if we compare to some of the new launches um, naturally if let's say we look at for example um, continuum mm. so continuum um, two bed plus a study mm. that is a two bath so that one is only at seven two one square feet so mm. little we'll touch it's a about bit 60 more. square feet bigger yeah mm. in terms yeah. of the price yeah. point but i would say the layout uh, is fantastic uh, master bathroom will not have any ventilation window. Yep. Mm. Uh, common bathroom will have ventilation window. Mm. U-shaped U -shape kitchen. So that will come with open flame, uh, mm. cooker hood and mm. hob. And then, um, yeah, I think you have the option of putting the dining and at the dining space or the balcony. Mm. I don't know why they draw two like dining to tables. La, to show you. I think yeah, it's to show you the, the different option, not saying that you need to have two tables. <laughs> so I think that's pretty uh, a pretty good thing. La. Yeah. No, yeah. I like the master bedroom also because you actually have a, like a little, it's almost like a walk-in wardrobe corridor before you head to the toilet. Because mm. normally if you see the floor plans of the master, you actually have your wardrobe 
like how to parallel yep. a little bit. Mm. Like this. So this is actually extra space. <clears throat> right. And I think yeah. the way they position the window, right, of the bedroom is quite smart because um, towards the balcony and the kitchen side, right, mm. it is actually facing towards another condo development called mm. Casa Felis. Mm. Mm. The bedroom's window will then be fronting towards the back, which is uh, the back of a landed house mm. along Ju Chiet Lane. Mm. So uh, along Ju Chiet Lane, that one I think is two and a half story currently. Yep. That one can potentially go up to three and a half. So if you kind of really want to have a clear view, um, that will be looking across number 66 and 68 mm. uh, along Ju Chiet Lane. Mm. So if you kind of want to have a clear view, then you might have to go for level four and mm. five. Mm. But otherwise, your view will definitely be blocked. Mm. 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 Yep. All right, so now let's, let's take a look at the three betas. So three betas, you have two layout, 1033. Mm. And this is actually the first floor unit, which is 1163. Mm. Right, so this is basically your normal kind of three beta layout. Mm. I'll say that this is more like a dumbbell. So master bedroom is at one end. The two of the other rooms are on the other end, mm. separated by the living, kitchen. Still uh, pretty enclosable, right? Yeah. Um, I think this layout is uh, pretty decent. Once you're three, three square feet, I think you can achieve this only because um, you have a dumbbell kind of layout. Mm. So your bedrooms, master bedroom is, I would say, extremely uh, luxurious. Yes. You have like Walking two rows, closet. Of, yes, two rows yeah. of the closet. Yes. If not enough, right, you go and push the wall, push the door out towards oh. the household shelter, then, then you go and, and turn the household shelter, shelter into <laughs> as <laughs> additional <laughs> storage space. <laughs> Uh, which you can potentially do so and then the other two bedrooms will correct, be stuck correct. towards the other side. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of pros over here. Um, I personally don't like the fact that the living so far is like in the middle mm. and then when you want to walk, right, then you'll be like, you know, walk walking across yeah, here and there. Uh. But uh, I'm not a designer, so if you can design something around it, I, I think that would be beautiful. Mm. Yeah. These are just uh, suggestions anyway for the furniture placement. Yeah. But personally for me, wait, let's go back to the other one. I, I'm a f big fan of dumbbell layout. Right. So I really like that the two common bedrooms are on the opposite side because if you have kids, they are basically like... Away from yeah, you. Yeah, away right? from you with their own bathroom area. Mm, so mm. you get to have uh, privacy, you know, at night with your partner. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think do take note that uh, can the walls be hacked down? We probably will have to check in with the developer mm. because mm. we're not too sure whether is this a PBVC. Mm. Right, okay. Yeah. But even though you want to take down the wall... The only side that you can take down will likely be either this or this. But was there some suggestion or some idea that you had about taking down the wall? Which is very common. A lot of uh, buyers have been mm. you know, asking, hey, oh, I can I... I but I don't think you can yeah. take down this wall uh, because this one naturally looks a bit oh, yeah, thicker than the definitely. rest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So likely, if you can, likely it'll be this one and the mm. middle one. And let's take a look at the ground floor unit. So ground floor unit is a bit different. Yeah, very different. You get a very big kitchen. Yeah. You have a dedicated like work area right here. In fact, there is actually a rendering of uh, what. So you realize there is this thing over here, which is like uh, is that is that WD? Like a washer dryer. This is washer dryer, yeah. is it? So I also thought it was very yeah like washer dryer. This space, and then they yeah. say that this can be done into a work alcove, like a little nook. Oh. So this is like a rendering. So this is your so called the two bedrooms in the oh, three bed, okay. and then you have uh, this little nook over right here. But well, this is the ground floor unit, so it's very, very different. Uh, this is on the high, the high ceiling. 3.6, mm. right, you're mentioning. 3.9, 3 sorry, 3.9. 3 3 3 3 one was 3.6 and the other was 3.9. Yeah. I think the this reason why they give 3.9 meters is... I think the car park clearance, right? Yeah, and I, I think that it might be a little bit dark because mm. it oh. might be blocked by the other side. Mm. So, so the higher ceiling is probably to compensate, you know, the mm. lack of lights coming in. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with a uh, higher ceiling, you can have, you know, nicer chandelier and then that can mm. potentially eliminate the space. Mm. And I think they also recognize this and they give a very squarish um, layout very. in terms of the living yeah. and yeah. Living dining. is very square. Right, in fact, you get a junior master kind of feel as well if you want it to be because this is a Jack and Jill. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And then you have your own dedicated master, which is very private. You get, wow, two rows of wardrobe. Correct, correct. Mm. So this is great actually for those who wants to live with children and their parents. Mm. Like three generations. Because you got a master for yourself, your junior master, maybe you can give your parents budget and Jill. And you got a little can stay in the middle. Then you got your study area. Yeah. And look at the number of wardrobe space for the master. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's like two sides, two rows. So Enough for you or not, George? <laughs> yeah, it's more than enough. Every time you see me in the same clothes. <laughs> so I think the developer recognized this mm. and then uh, they give 
a very good layout mm. for this uh, particular to entice area. entice people uh, that yeah, yeah this probably is also a good unit doesn't yeah. mean that it's on the first floor it's the only one well thought you know. well thought because Correct. if you think about this kind of square feet into this new launches one one six three is usually um those three beta plus utility plus mm. yacht kind of like layout mm. or maybe three plus study kind of layout space yeah. you don't really get a three beta at one thousand one square feet mm. so this is really really you know in a way quite luxurious in terms of the strata yeah, space and the and the PS space is not excessively big so mm. I I personally lo- love love um how they are doing it up. I mean, yeah. they could potentially just go all the way. Yeah, go all the way, right? But yeah. yeah, good job, good job. Mm. So now let's take a look at the last configuration type, which is a four bader. So four bader, um, this will be your standard units, and this will then be the higher floor, top floor unit, right? Oh no, this one is stack four. Stack four. Stack four. Mm. Stack oh, right. four with one of the units on the top floor okay, having correct. a higher ceiling, and the one before that, that this one is will stack be stack number two. two. Mm. Yes. Likewise, I think this one is also very much like the ground floor unit that we saw. Mm. Uh, very squarish kind of layout, mm. just that you get additional bath, uh, additional bedroom mm. on the top. Um, Otherwise, but this is this spot is a bit weird. Uh. It's like mm. a little study area at the, at the, entrance, at the entrance area. Yeah. So usually people will just want to do their cabinetry is either this mm. side or this side. Uh. Correct, correct. Mm. And the washer dryer is like right beside the DB box. Did I get it wrong? Oh yeah, I think that's right. Mm. Washer dryer beside DB box area. Mm. Person for, personally for me, I'm not a fan of how the bedrooms are placed la, mm. because you're all one side. But I understand because of the stack it's in, this is like the, I guess the most efficient way to do it. But uh. if compared to the four bedders and the three bedders, I actually prefer the room layout in the three bedders more than the four. Mm. Mm. I get why they are putting all the mm. bedrooms over towards that side. Mm. Because... Uh, the back of the lander home. Yeah, yeah. Facing the back of the yeah. lander yeah. home. Of course, this one, you might have to go for level four and five. Mm. Um, the, my, my pinpoint is the washer and dryer. Uh, because where you're going to hang the clothes, uh, if you talk about like your daily kind of lifestyle, mm. family of four, you definitely have to... Or four or five, mm. I don't know. So you definitely have to do like laundry almost every yeah, day. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, I don't know. If you're going to hang the clothes at the balcony, balcony area, room? then you're going to like take and then walk and then take, walk and there. So, uh, so yeah. Space is, uh, otherwise I think it's, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. How about the other one? This one is a very, very long entrance for you. This one, if you know long. this, right? I think it's bigger, much bigger than the other one because it comes with the additional <coughs> store and the WC. <coughs> mm. So oh, I think right the here. other layout didn't have the WC. Doesn't so have. Right? Yeah. If, I, if I'm correct. Nope, the other one doesn't have. have yeah. In and fact, this is the only layout in the whole entire development that comes with a store and a WC. Correct. So this is really, I would say, one of the more yeah. the luxury, like they give you really everything, like a storeroom, a shelter, a WC. But interestingly, this unit, basically three quarter, mm. I mean... Because they had to fit the bedroom. Three in. quarter of the bedrooms <laughs> are all facing towards the church. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's all facing towards the church on that side, mm. which is the northeast side. You do still get to two wardrobes in your master. But this long foyer space is quite... Yeah, I'm uh, not a fan of that. But I suppose someone can build additional storage space. I mean, if you have children, right. you know that they accumulated a lot of things. So if they know how to get an ID to do it properly, it will not be wasted space. Mm. Yeah, no children course. also will accumulate a lot of things. Right? <laughs> is this speaking from experience? Bro? No. <laughs> but the, the store comes with windows. So I think it will be a, a good room, space uh. yeah, for a helper's room. Mm. Yeah, At least there's ventilation window. So All it's right, pretty good. Right. Fittings wise, I think they are all pretty premium, la, premium right, fittings, yeah. lah. Duravit. So definitely, they are speaking to a certain market, mm-hmm. a certain audience that they are trying to attract for this particular development. I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I believe most of the developments around there, they are all in the same kind of like vibes and, correct, and feel. Correct. Correct. Now let's take a look at the last part, which is more of like the price matrix. Mm. Um, of course, this is based on what they have announced back in February. February. This year, in terms of the preview pricing of 2284, of course, this project has already launched uh, in February. Mm-hmm. Preview in February, launched on the 2nd of March. March. Um, right now, they have sold, if I'm not wrong, there's about one unit. Mm, yeah, the one unit, unit sold. On yeah, the two bedder units sold on the third floor. This is basically the remaining units that's available. So, right now, two bedders, you have three units available. Uh, these are all the pricing that we have. I've done. We have done our summary at the, at the back itself, so we are happy to share that with you. So in terms of the two beders, three beders, and these are also the four beder pricing. So on average, I would say that the PSF is trending between a range of 2.2 to 2.3k PSF. Mm. Right. Mm. So of course, this is the unit um, mix that's currently available. So this is the unit that's sold at level three, right? 
we have done up a summary. So this is what um, this is what basically we're comparing to the new launches mm. in that Kunseng yeah. area, yes. uh, mm. Steel Road area. So in that particular area, we do get um, two new launches so far. Claydens uh, is one of them. That's, this is at basically at the main Steel Road, mm. and you have uh, Alessia, which is at uh, Juche Lane, if I'm not wrong. Mm. Yeah, correct. So this. Um, of course, in terms of the, the TOP dates, uh, is a bit different because uh, this will be the earliest one. Mm. Whereas Kunseng is basically estimated to be around July 2027. Mm. But if you look at the pricing of Kunseng as compared to maybe say probably Claydens, for example, anyway, all these are all freehold projects. Uh, our PSF pricing is pretty close. Uh, in fact, there are some of them that is actually in a much more affordable pricing than Claydens. Mm. Mm. I think uh, when Kunseng launched, right, mm. they probably have studied the competitors around there. If you if you take a look at the pricing, I think it's very strategic. Yeah. Their two bidders and the three bidders price disparity is very clear. Mm. Um, if you buy, for example, a Claydens two plus study, you can easily go for a three bidder at Kunseng. Right. Likewise, if you go for a three plus study at Claydens, you can go for a four bidder at Kunseng. Mm. So um, I think price point wise, uh, it is more or less in the in that region mm. uh, within that uh, vicinity. So. Uh, I think price point is is set out to want to make sure that they can clear mm. all these units. Uh, you know, not, not seventeen number of units. Mm. Um, but if you take a look at uh, because the two bidders is very luxurious in terms of the overall size. Mm. If you compare to um, how about continuum? Yeah, continuum. Continuum. Um, you get a two bidder at about six hundred forty six square feet. That is dumbbell layout, a mini storage space you can get something at about 1.7 odd million dollars. Mm. So slightly smaller and then something bigger. Mm. But of course, Continuum is a much bigger yeah, project. project. Yep. So you have that volume effect right over there. Mm. Yep. Um, that one is going at, in fact, slightly cheaper than Kun Seng House. Mm. Mm. So I think what the consumers have is you have a lot of options. Yep. You can either go for something that is much bigger. PSF-wise is affordable. Mm. Uh, you can go for this one. But of course, ultimately, it still depends on your quantum price, mm. uh, which is, you know, the LTV and TDS. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I think buyers have a lot of options. But if you take a look at 3 beta at Kun Seng House, $2.3 million, uh, that is also the about the entry price for a 3. But the 3 beta at Continuum, right, will be on the smaller All side, 872 mm. square feet. Right. The third bedroom will only be able to fit in a single size bed. Right. So that is also dumbbell layout. So what I would say is if you want something that is very luxurious, mm. overall big in space, mm. you can go for Kun Seng House. But if let's say, you know, you just want to purely go for the number of bedrooms, but you want something bigger, then I think buyers have options. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And I think both different type of projects, uh, both these two projects, um, Kun Seng, Claydens, mm. or even down to Continuum, they basically attract different type of buyers. Yep. Right. right. So Correct. for some buyers, they really love big projects. They want yeah. the branding. Correct. They want the kind of like facilities you know, for their family. So they will generally choose the Continuum, mm. right. uh, which is also in the D15 area. Mm. Uh, but of course, if you like something that is smaller, uh, you the do, more do, quaint neighborhood, right. cozy. You know. Then yeah. there are plenty of options available. I mean, right now, we, uh, you already see that there are actually three options that's available. Mm. All these are all, we call it the small little developments. Right. Right. Yeah. But in terms of the price matrix, in terms of the, um, the, the floor design, the unit design mm. I think that's something that you may want to consider because there are some um, floor plans which I think that is pretty efficient in terms of layout mm. um, they cater they mean they cater towards family as well mm. so I think it's really down to the, the your individual um, buying options mm. Mm. and this era of uh, floor plan do not have things like your bay window your planter box yes. so uh, you don't have a lot of like wasted space of course those are you can find cheaper resale options at the Tolokura mm. area so I think it's really down to individual, yeah. yeah. But small scale development, you get a lot of privacy. You don't bump into your neighbors. You just drive home straight away, go back home. Right. Yeah, you won't speak to anyone. Yeah. I think coming to the layout, I remember I saw some of the USP for these projects. Yeah. Like they were saying, the developer is saying that every bedroom they guarantee that they can put in a queen size bed. Yes, correct. Right. So correct. I think mm. space is something that they are they are very much particular about. Yes. So they want. Mm. I mean, looking at this kind of like size, mm. they could have just built in, let's say, a, a studio or one bed unit correct, in. Correct. You know, but they purposely chose to go for a two bedder. In fact, two bed, two bath, and then a three bedder and a four bedder. You know, goes to show that they want to maintain, uh, the kind of like livable space for the the, the right, people are, are we buying. Very, I think that for certain people, when they have grown up, let's say with a certain kind of lifestyle, mm. they would want this kind of bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah. The, those mm. smaller bedrooms which can only fit a single bed, it's not going to be appealing to to them. So this mm. I feel is really quite a lifestyle. 
uh, choice for mm. them. I just la. realized something. Yes. The bathroom Georgie. is a bit small for the common bathroom. For the common uh, bathroom. Yeah. It's really a bit small. If you take a closer look at the WC and the door, mm. then you stand inside, then you close the door. Mm. Yeah, it's really just that. But it could also be that, you know, the amount of time you spend 24 hours in a bathroom versus, let's say, the dining and living area. So I think it's just like the opportunity cost. <laughs> la. You know what yeah. I mean? Bathroom well, is a lot of our thinking... Our thinking corner, our thinking chair. Too much information, bro. Yeah. Too much information. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering what is this called, <laughs> called day rack? What do you think is a day rack? Um, yeah, for, if you... I if realize you, there's I a day rack like here. Shelvings. Oh, right. shelvings, okay, yeah. okay, okay. oh, yes, I think if I'm correct, they there's, there's a day rack right here yes. as well. Mm. So I think these are also some of the very interesting things that developers right. are, are A lot of thoughtful in. touches for this right. particular is development. Is uh, I think there might have yeah. been. Yeah. So we, we do see a couple of day racks here and there. Uh, three bedders, I think there's also a day rack. Mm. Right here. Yeah, correct. Mm. So you can clearly see that the developers, I think they put in a lot of thoughts uh, yes. in the floor plan. I think that's correct. something that's quite rare coming from a boutique developer. Right. I, I think like when they were designing this particular project, they did think about who their audience is going to be mm. and what that particular group will be looking for. Mm. They won't be your normal um, buyers and sellers who are just transacting, hoping for capital appreciation. They know that the people who are coming to this project, Stay likely, long term. yes, it's mm. going to be a home for them. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any closing thoughts, George? Yeah. So I think my closing thoughts is, uh, Kunsing is a property development or the unit that you can buy, um, stay for long term due mm. to the fact that you have um, the school factors. Mm as well as I think the livability mm. conditions yeah, in that area. Mm. So you can buy here, stay for, you know, a sustained period of time. I mm. would say, you know, even down to like six up. years, seven years, mm. eight years, you can stay there. Given that it's freehold, you don't have mm. any lease decay effect. Yes. Right. Um, space is pretty good. And I think you are the, this is the type of house that you can continue to live mm. while your family plans expand. Mm. So yeah. like a beaver home. Yeah, correct. So I think they can potentially buy this one, uh, you know, over at this area. Yeah. yeah. Alexa? Uh, personally for me, uh, I think coming from a real estate agent point of view, normally we don't really go for like smaller volume, smaller transaction, mm. boutique project. But for me, sometimes you have to look at these property as homes as well. Mm. Because when you look them as, as homes rather than uh, like just for investment, your criteria changes. Right. And looking at the floor plan for the unit, I really love the thought that went into the layout. Mm. If you said, if I have a family living here, I will be comfortable, I will be happy. When mm. I cook, the smell will not be trapped in the kitchen. My children, when they grow up to be young adults, the room is going to be spacious enough for them to mm -hmm. go in. Living in a dining room, I want to host parties, my friends can gather mm. comfortably. So as a person living in a home, these are things that would be important for me. Mm. Mm. I think that's a very, very good thought. Mm. So you can see that, you know, ultimately, um, buying to a project in mm. that area definitely is all about the lifestyle. It's about your mm. family, especially when it's like positioned across four different schools uh, yes. in the area. Right. Um, definitely for the long-term planning, this will be ideal for you. So in a way, moreover, it's a free home. There's no lease decay. Mm. You can use it as a pivot home. You can buy this. And eventually, if you want to right-size to a smaller unit, you can still rent out this place as well because yes. you're in a very vibrant neighbourhood yes. where I think rental is definitely very vibrant right. and uh, very MRTs buoyant. are coming up exactly <laughs> and moreover you're in D15 area so I think that area of course um, the other thing that we didn't really talk about is actually the UIA master plan but I think that one is really a lot of mm. coverage on that yes. mm. everybody's talking about the Paileva you know the airbase relocation yes. where you know the spillover effect will spill right into the whole entire D15 area so I think that's something that you may also want to you know hatch, a con hatch upon mm. um, you know for the long term as well mm. so I think that's something for you to take note of so all in all this project is already launched uh, it's already readily available so if you want to find out more about this development uh, feel free to reach out to any of our consultants uh, we are very happy to share with you more information mm -hmm. run you through the numbers you know go through the stack analysis as well yes. uh, and also to help you to find your ideal unit right yep. so with that we have come to the end of this Kun Seng House review we hope you like the content do stay tuned to this channel for more new launch review series and to the next video take care goodbye bye